Welcome to Siva Labs. In this video, I would like to share my personal journey towards how I learned writing better tests. So in the beginning, when I started my career as a Java developer in 2006, I started working on a project which is using Java 1.5, Charlotte's JSPs and MySQL. And there are zero automated tests. And most of the times, the manual testing via UI. So the typical workflow would look like we make a change for uh, whatever the feature we are working on, uh, restart the server, navigate to the screen that we are working on and verify the change. So for every small change, we were doing like this. And it's like a, there are lots of these WTF moments because we are working on a small change, but in order to verify that change, we had to log in first and then we had to navigate through various other screens and sometimes we may end up filling a long form in order to reach the screen that we are working on. But we were not making any changes to any of those previous screens, but still we had to fill in all those forms to reach to the form that we are actually working on and then verify the change. So even for a tiny change to verify, it took a lot of time and we were uh, very frustrated. And then uh, there is a next step where I thought instead of doing all this manually, uh, mainly because of my laziness to fill all those forms, I thought of uh, why not create a simple class with main method and then write code to actually call that method whatever uh, you are working on to see how it is working. So typically this is how I did it. I created a simple class with a main method and whenever I am working on a feature, I create a simple static uh, private method and then implement the logic. Okay, uh, call uh, instantiate whatever the service you are actually working on and then uh, call the method and then verify the behavior. So sometimes I am able to do this way, this way or sometimes I could not because it has uh, dependencies on some other mechanisms like a JNDA lookups and things like that. So but it was a little bit of uh, betterment than uh, previously uh, doing this testing completely via UI. And then the next stage we started using JUnit. So we started creating a JUnit automated test suite so that whenever uh, we want to verify the system behavior, we could uh, run the test suite and then see whether our system is still uh, behaving as expected or not. It's a lot of uh, improvement. But still, the integration testing is manual only because there were a lot of uh, external services we were using like uh, databases, uh, messaging queues, things like that. And we don't have a way to automate those uh, things. Usually, there is an integration testing environment where all these tools are installed and configured. And whenever any team member implements a new feature and when, whenever they want to test, they deploy their changes into those uh, integration environment and then verify it. And usually it happens like uh, there is a, a common channel where a person sends a notification saying that, hey, I'm working on so and so feature for that I'm going to deploy my changes and then verify, please don't make any other changes because it's a common environment. And if somebody else is also making some change, it may affect your uh, testing process. Maybe you are expecting 10 records from whatever the uh, use case you are working on. But meanwhile, if somebody else insert the uh, data into the same table, maybe you get uh, 15 records and then you don't know whether your logic is strong or what happened. So that's the reason why there is usually, hey, I am working on this feature, please don't make any changes. And usually there is one single person always who don't read these notifications at all and then deploy their changes and override your changes and causes a lot of problem. Always, there is always one person like that in every team. And even after doing this, uh, there is a lot of manual things like uh, you need to set up the data. Maybe for your use case, you are expecting some test data and uh, you may need to clean it up also because it may cause trouble for other use cases. So there is a lot of manual uh, steps involved in this process. 
and then we entered into the next stage where uh, docker came into the picture and it brings in a lot of new uh, ways of doing things and uh, it really revolutionized uh, how we do things uh, as, and then we continue using unit testing using junit and mock it to mock server we were able to cover a lot of uh, uh, unit test cases using junit but for integration testing we were using docker compose uh, the way we did it is uh, we know what uh, services we are using like uh, mysql and uh, active mq or things like that and we define all those services in our docker compose ml definitions and just before starting the integration test we spin up all those containers and then run the integration tests uh, against those services but the problem with this service uh, with this setup is all these uh, services needs to be bind uh, to a uh, host on a fixed port so that we can talk to those uh, services. Because of this, you cannot run multiple builds parallelly because those services are already running on a port. You, you cannot uh, spin up again one more set of uh, those services and there will be port conflict. So in our Jenkins build pipeline, we had to uh, run uh, sequentially one build after another we cannot run multiple parallel builds at the same time and and also because there are multiple teams using the same Jenkins build pipelines and we need to coordinate a lot um, saying that okay for our service we are using so and so services and we are going to uh, use these ports if you are using similar services please uh, allocate it on a different ports onto the host otherwise there will be port conflicts and there needs to be a significant uh, coordination required for each uh, our team uh, for these services and also sometimes uh, when things uh, got failed in unexpected ways and the cleanup did not happen properly and we had to occasionally uh, log in into these Jenkins slaves and then uh, clean up the containers. It's a, a good progress with the Docker Compose but there are these limitations. Uh, still we had to live with this uh, manual process. And then the next stage, uh, we still continue using unit testing with JUnit Marketo. And then uh, for mocking these external services, we were using mock server and wire mock. And then for integration testing, we found uh, this test containers library, which helps a lot. And the way test containers works is it uses Docker under the hood. And you can define for my test, I want, let's say, uh, MySQL and I want Redis and then before executing your actual test it spin up those containers and it will uh, dynamically allocate some ports and you can look it up uh, what ports they are running on and then you talk to, the, uh, to those services and run your tests and after the tests are uh, done it will automatically clean up all these containers so there is no manual step involved in this whole process of uh, integration testing. Test containers takes care of all these uh, headaches that we had previously while using Docker Compose directly. So it made uh, integration testing a lot easier and powerful as well. Because we don't uh, have to uh, resort to using any mock service anymore. So one common scenario in uh, application integration testing is uh, using in-memory databases. Like in most of the Spring Boot applications, people use uh, HSQL or H2 database for writing integration tests while they are actually using, say, MySQL or Postgres in production database. That's not a good idea because uh, it gives a false impression of uh, your application is working uh, as expected but there could be a chance that what worked for H2 might not work for uh, Postgres and there could be differences and which might behave differently. So ideally you should be testing against the same type of database which you are using in production. And test containers makes it a trivial like uh, you can use uh, any uh, SQL databases like MySQL, Postgres, and there are plenty of uh, uh, databases support. And also you can use uh, NoSQL databases like MongoDB, Cassandra, things like that. And then there are uh, specific modules like uh, Kafka, Redis, RabbitMQ. So most of the modules that we use, it's already provided by test containers.
and also these days most of the applications are built using microservices architecture and there are a lot of uh, uh, third uh, third party um, api service dependencies so we used wiremark and mount bank hourfly uh, to simulate those uh, external service responses and then test our functionality finally we started using uh, cypress and in the recent times we started using playwright for writing end to end testing so overall if you take a look at the uh, progress for the last uh, 10 15 years the way we test uh, our application significantly improved now we are able to test our application in such a way that you just clone the repository and run uh, all the entire tests unit test integration test everything with a single command and all the dependencies that you need can be provided by test containers and test containers is a really a game changer because it will allow you to test with real services instead of mocks which is going to give you a lot of confidence like uh, most of the times these days when i look at the applications they are not having too much of complicated logic but they are using a lot of services like uh, kafka or uh, rabbitmq uh, and the databases no sql databases so test containers enables you to write integration tests using all those services without having to have any manual setup involved so it really uh, simplifies the process of integration testing and as i mentioned in one of the uh, previous slide one of the problem that we were facing while using docker compose is port conflicts but here test containers uh, takes care of that like uh, it will allocate a dynamic port onto your host so that you can look it up and then you can bind your uh, references to that uh, endpoint uh, using this dynamic port so that there is no port conflicts even when you are running your test uh, parallelly so you can run a bunch of uh, tests running parallelly or even running multiple pipelines on the same jenkins build server there is no uh, port conflicts so it's a huge improvement and also test containers takes care of uh, cleaning up all those uh, containers that are spinned up for tests even if it if the uh, tests are successful or failed it doesn't matter uh, test containers takes care of cleaning up all those containers yeah the huge thing that why i am saying test containers is a game changer is the developer experience just imagine you are working on a project and um, it is using postgres database kafka redis for caching and so on and so forth and if you have to set up all those tools before running a single integration test how painful it is now with test containers you just clone the repository and run the command whatever uh, maven or gradle whatever you just run a single command test containers takes care of pulling all those uh, containers that are required for your application and then use that and run the integration test suit so from the developer experience point of view it is wonderful and out of the box it supports major frameworks like uh, if you are coming from a uh, java background uh, nowadays there are three major most popular frameworks like spring boot quarkus and micronaut and all of them provide out of the box integration for our test containers and it signifies it significantly reduces the kind of setup especially for quarkus and micronaut they provide dev services and test resources concept and you don't even need to define uh, these resources uh, when the application is using some postgres or kafka it automatically takes care of spinning up those services and one more thing is maybe you can think okay this is for java based services but what if i am using something else some other language the good news is uh, test containers is also available for java kotlin scala python go node .net and rust languages as well and they are uh, being actively worked on they are not as mature as uh, java modules but they are being actively worked on and uh, you can carry forward the same um, knowledge of uh, testing using test containers and to these new languages as well so you can standardize on test containers and then irrespective of the language you are using you can still test uh, right integration test using test containers 
so that's what my personal journey over the years how i started testing and uh, how the overall testing process and tools and techniques evolved over the time and one thing i would like to say uh, in many places that i see people write tests for the sake of uh, code coverage metric to reach uh, in some companies there is a uh, uh, limitation or whatever you say process that says you need to have 80% code coverage otherwise you are not allowed to go to production so people write tests just for the sake of achieving that target but it is not for them it is for you only like uh, just imagine you had to work on a feature uh, a, an existing feature you want to change uh, slightly the behavior and imagine having a test where you can sim- simply run the test and then verify it and then you make the change and then you can verify it as simple as that otherwise if you don't have that kind of a, a test suit you will end up in a uh, a uh, mode of uh, figuring out okay how this thing is actually working on and a lot of uh, investigation has to happen first of all to understand that all by looking at the code whereas when you have that kind of integration test you just run it it working fine and then you make the change and then you run it again and then see whether your change is affecting the way you want it to be or not so tests are not for the managers or for the process it's for you so start writing tests you will thank yourself later and finally this is what i want to say write tests in such a way that it makes you to go to sleep peacefully at night without worrying about getting page alerts do you like getting page alerts saying production is down or some feature is not working in the morning 2:45 am i don't like to receive such page alerts in the morning instead i would spend more time writing more tests and go to production with more confidence that i won't get such alerts more frequently so this is my journey towards learning how to write tests in a better way and if you are interested you can check out uh, testcontainers.org so you can find a pretty good documentation here and you can also see what are all the modules that it already provides and there is a good amount of documentation over here and also you can check out the test containers arc in github and you can see there are multiple uh, repositories for each language there is java go dot net scala node python uh, rust as well so you can explore how to use them over these uh, readme files and if you are interested you can check out uh, recently i made a spring boot tips series video where i talk about how to use test containers in spring boot tips part 5 you can explore this video to learn how to test using test containers so that's what my journey towards learning how to write better test and what's your journey do you have any interesting story to share please comment it in the comments